like every true-born Englishman. The moment you go back a few years, you find that your family is a real mixture. A mixture of peoples from all over the place. Different peoples with different creeds. So only a couple of generations back you find East London Judaism, you find Welsh Chapel, and you find Kent Methodism, rural Kent Methodism. And, and I grew up in Kent. I grew up in a, a tiny hamlet and if we wanted to go shopping we had to walk two miles and the walk to the village where the shops were took us through another hamlet called Sandway and it was called Sandway because of the sandy soil on which it was built because a lot of Kent has got sandy soil and sandy soil is perfect for one particular crop. It's perfect for cherries and Kent was famous for its cherry orchards and its cherry crop and the cherry crop is picked or was picked in July in the hottest part of the year. So this is a story about the heat and light of the sun during the cherry harvest and it's called How Sun Stole Moon's Light and this is how I will tell it to you. Long ago, when the world was still young, Kent was covered in cherry orchards. And in the month of July, the people of Kent would be busy in the orchards gathering the crop. And anybody who wasn't able enough to climb up and pick the cherries from the trees would be at the bottom packing them. There would be parents, there would be children, there would be grandparents. Everybody was involved. And it was hot, hot work because the sun beat down. This is July, and this July was the hottest July that anyone could remember, and everyone was wilting in the heat and light of the sun during the day, and they couldn't wait for the sun to dip below the horizon so that the air would cool, and they could relax, and they could lay back, and they could sing songs, and they could tell each other stories. But in order to do that, because remember, this is when the world was still young, there was no artificial light, you either had fires or you relied on the light of the moon. And so the moment that the sun dipped below the horizon, the cherry pickers of Kent would sing to the moon to call to her. The sun has gone to sleep at night, so come pale moon, give us your light. And the moment the moon appeared over the horizon and started to ascend into the night sky, the cherry pickers of Kent, their friends and their families would look up and with one voice of adoration, sigh. <sighs> Everybody was delighted to see the moon because she would rise in the night sky, always reliable, always the same, a constant in their lives. For during the night, she shone down with her beautiful disc of pale, cool light. And the people of Kent loved the moon, and they sang to her every night, and they sighed for her every night. But one was not happy about this, and that, of course, was the sun. The sun knew that the cherry pickers of Kent and their friends and family couldn't wait for him to dip below the horizon, which was ungrateful because he was the one who gave them the light that they needed in order to pick the crop. He was the one who gave the light and the heat to enable the cherries to ripen, the very cherries that the cherry pickers were picking. It was ungrateful for them to prefer the moon over him and to sing to the moon, the sun has gone to sleep at night, so come pale moon, give us your light, and then to sigh when she appeared. <gasps> he had had enough. But then he had the answer. He would make a wager against the moon. He would invite her to gamble her light with him on a game of chance. Now I said, I grew up in Kent and I said that I had uh, East London Judaism and Welsh Chapel and Kent Methodism in me. And so this story comes from my Methodist core. And Methodism has never been that fond of gambling, so let this story be a lesson to you. And I'm not going to say what game of chance the sun invited the moon to engage in. It may have been dice, it may have been cards, it could have been rock, paper, scissors. But every game of chance is only a game of chance as long as nobody cheats. 
And it is possible to cheat in any game. Yes, even in Rock, Paper, Scissors. And if you don't know the special move that allows you to win it, I'm not telling you because it will only encourage you. And the moon fell for it. She played whatever game you think the moon and the sun should have played. And she lost some of her light to him. But he said to her with his gentle voice and his tongues of flame caressing her, he tempted her. There's always another chance. There's always another go. You will win. And so she bet more of her light and more of her light and more of her light until she had no light left. And she wept when she realised what she'd done, and she begged the sun to return at least some of her light to her. But the sun said, oh no, the cherry pickers of Kent need to learn that only I am the source of light. You will have no light. You must spend the rest of time in darkness, for I will take your light, and I will hide it where you will never find it where the men and the women and the creatures of the earth will never find it. For in the night, darkness will reign, and people will delight on seeing me in the morning as I appear over the horizon, and they will sigh for me. <sighs> the next night... The sun went down. The cherry pickers had been working all day. They were hot. They were desperate to lie down in the grass and to sing songs and to tell each other stories. And they looked forward to the moon rising. So they sang, the sun has gone to sleep at night. So come pale moon, give us your light. Well, the moon did rise, but they couldn't see her because she was dark. And so they thought she had not appeared. And they sang again, the sun has gone to sleep at night. So come pale moon, give us your light. And the moon said, I'm here, I'm here. But the cherry pickers of Kent couldn't hear the moon because they were talking amongst themselves so much about their fear that the moon had disappeared. So they kept singing, the sun has gone to sleep at night. So come pale moon, give us your light. And they sang all night until their voices were hoarse. And the moon had passed overhead without them realising, for she had no light. And she went down over the horizon, and the sun came up the next day. But the people of Kent did not sigh with joy to see him, for they had had no sleep. For they had been trying to bring the moonlight back. This went on for several nights until fewer and fewer people sang to the moon and then no one sang to the moon. But in the silence of the night with no one singing, Moon's quiet voice could be heard as she told the cherry pickers of Kent as they sat in the darkness of her foolishness of how she had accepted the wager of the sun and she had bet her own light and lost it to him. How he had taken her light away and hidden it in a place she would never find it. The men and women and the creatures of the earth would never find it. And she begged them to find the light for her. So, the sun came up and the men and women of Kent gathered the crop in again and as soon as night came, they lit their torches and they went searching for Moon's light. They dug under the ground and they could not find it. They looked inside hollow trees, they could not find it. They peered into closed flowers, they could not find it. They looked everywhere, they think the sun may have hidden the Moon's light. No one could find Moon's light. But one night... After everyone had given up any hope of finding Moon's light, a beetle was in one of the cherry orchards, in one of the cherry trees, nibbling at one of the cherries, a cherry that had been left behind by the pickers because it had, be, it had what we might say, gone over. It was overripe. It wasn't suitable to be picked. And the beetle was enjoying the soft flesh. In fact, the beetle was enjoying the soft flesh so much 
it forgot to stop eating when it hit the stone at the core of the flesh. And so it started nibbling at the stone. And as it nibbled at the stone, a tiny little chip of the stone came away and there was a hole in the stone in the heart of the cherry. And from the tiny little hole in the stone, a thin beam of blue light pierced the velvet darkness of the night sky. The beetle had found Moon's light. Now, for a little beetle, a hard cherry stone is a very difficult thing to crack. And so the beetle called its family and its friends, and the beetles gathered up into the tree and went along the branch and down the stalk into the cherry, and they gathered and they ate and they nibbled and they nibbled at the stone until the stone eventually cracked open. And the night was filled with cool blue light as the light flooded from the cherry orchard up into the sky and the moon gathered it to herself and shone down upon the earth and the cherry pickers of Kent and their friends and families who were in their beds were woken up by a change in the light and they looked in their bedrooms, in their little homes, and saw through the window there was a blue light casting shadows on their walls. And they left their houses and stared up, and there was the moon, forever grateful to the beetles for finding the light. And to show how grateful she was to the beetles, she gave them a gift of some of that light she gave the beetles some of the light which meant, of course, that she herself did not have enough light to shine as a full disc every night of the month. And so after that, she waned during the month, but then waxed and came back again. And so the people of Kent still had the moon, it's just that she changed her shape over the month. And that helped people know where they were in relation to the calendar as she did that. And as for the Beatles, well, what would they do with Moonlight? Well, I can tell you. You, you will know if you've ever been for a walk in the countryside in the summer, because you may have noticed in the long grasses little pinpricks of bluey green light. And if you see those, those are glowworms who have carried the moon's light with them ever since. As a reminder that you should never gamble away your light. And that is my story of how sun stole moon's light. And that is how I have told it to you.